top eight Visual Studio Code shortcuts for you to learn in 2020 and going into 2021. Yo, what's up guys? This is your boy Kazi from Clever Programmer back here with another banger. If you wanna help me get this video out, and I know you do, go ahead and smash that like button. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps so many other people out there in the world who are trying to get jobs as developers. So please go ahead and do that. I will love you forever. With that said, let's jump straight into the video. Now, these are the shortcuts that I use and there are some shortcuts that I wasn't even using, but they are so valuable. We decided to pack all eight of them in this one video to give them to you. If you enjoy these shortcuts so much and you want more, we might even do a part two. So if that's ever interesting to you, let us know in the comments below. Now, I know there are going to be some of you that are going to be like, oh, Kazi, there's more, there's more shortcuts. You only mentioned eight, but there's 21. I counted. There's a lot of them. You can choose to use the ones I'm sharing with you or not. These are just the ones I use, guys. So that's why I'm sharing them with you, okay? With that said, let's jump into it. Shortcut number one, highlight next instance. All right, so let's say you are coding and you have some type of variable like counter. You know, we have that incremental variable that's sitting there and just like counting shit up. Or you have some other variable and you need to change that from counter but you have eight of them and it's called counter everywhere. And instead of counter, maybe you want to rename that to the word count. How do you go and select all of those counts everywhere? Well, the shortcut is control D if you're on windows, command D if you're on a Mac, that shortcut would allow you to actually highlight those words and on a Mac. What you can also do is you can hold command and then keep going command D command D command D and you can keep selecting multiple of those at the same time. And then at the same time, you can actually rewrite them all. You guys have seen the multiple cursor thing, right? That visual studio code, or we even saw people on sublime text use. That's the way to do it. So they'll select multiple cursors and then they can actually change change all the words simultaneously. That one is a very useful one that you can use command D or control D. So use that option for number two. Here's another one that's useful. Now, most of the times I personally actually use the shortcut, not that much in visual studio code. I actually use it whenever I'm on Chrome and I use it all the freaking time. This one is command L. It selects the current line that you're on. And why I love using it on Chrome is whenever I do command L, it automatically selects the entire URL. And so then I can change it to whatever I want. In Visual Studio Code, use it to select the entire current line. So maybe you wanna delete the current line, Command L, delete, or Control L on Windows, delete. That is a shortcut for selecting that. Shortcut number three commenting a line. Now this is really important because there are many times you're coding and you want to actually turn that line into a comment. So how do you do that very, very quickly? Now for most people, what they do is they'll go to the start of that line and type in slash slash if you're using JavaScript or they'll type in pound if you're making a comment in Python. So eh, don't do that. Here's a better way. Just be on that line anywhere you're at, hold command and hit slash. If you do command slash, it's automatically going to put the comment in whatever language you're using. So it's intelligent. So if you're doing Python, it'll automatically put a pound in front of the line. If you are using JavaScript, it'll automatically put slash slash. If you're using HTML, it will automatically put a HTML comment because most of us always forget how HTML gets commented. I forget that a lot of the times, like angle bracket, exclamation mark, parentheses, parentheses, like what the hell who f came up with that? Commenting a line, this is honestly one of the actual most useful shortcuts. Make sure you actually write this one down. You're going to be needing it. Shortcut number four, uncommenting a line. This is another thing that you might need to do pretty frequently. If you comment something, you might want to also uncomment it. A common mistake you might make is you might comment it by doing command slash, but then you might go back and remove it. Don't do that. Instead, what you should do is just do the same shortcut again. So command slash or control slash on Windows that will also uncomment. So it'll uncomment and comment. There you go. Shortcut number five, move by word. This one, I really like, again, if you guys want a more advanced tutorial, I can actually do a Vim training with you guys and you guys will just like smoke every developer. 
that would be a lot of fun. If you're interested, let me know in the comments below. But for now, let's just use the normal way of doing moving word by word. This is a very common one, and I really want you guys to get this one down and practice all of these. If you don't practice them, you just watch this video, you're like, that was a cool video. You're not gonna get shit out of it. I want you to actually improve, like actually improve your skill. And the way you do that is you buy crazy repetition. So even if you're watching this video, be listening to this video and just like repeating the shortcuts that I'm sharing with you. I want you to have a true behavioral. I care about that one person who's gonna have a real behavioral change out of this. Not the 100,000 people are gonna watch this. It's gonna be like, oh, it's a cool video. Moving word by word, hold control and press right or left on your keyboard arrows. That allows you to go word by word. So if you're writing a for loop for I in range, whatever, and you wanna go and so get all the way to the part that says range, it's pretty smart to actually move word by word. So just hold control, move word by word. And then if you wanna like add a modifier to it, it's option right on Mac and control right on Windows, I believe. Windows users, double check me on that. But option right and left to move word by word on Mac. If you do this, it allows you to just move a lot easier. Why I also really like this is if you add in an additional modifier with it. So if you hold option and shift, and then you move right and left, it will actually select those words for you. It'll actually select them. And then if you hit delete, it'll delete the whole word. Much better than you sitting there going to the end of a word and then just hitting backspace five times to remove it. That's silly. Hold shift, hold option, left or right, select the whole thing, delete it. In the start, your productivity when you're doing these tips is gonna go down. So right now you might be watching this, you're gonna be like, Kazi, I'm working the way that I'm working. It's totally fine. I'm fine. Nothing bad's gonna happen to me. I still have a job. Here's why I'm saying this. Your productivity in the start is gonna go down. So be ready for that. It's gonna keep going down, down, down. Then when it starts going up, you will actually smoke yourself how you were. And the quicker you can be, the faster you can actually test your own ideas in the app that you're building or at the job that you're at or whatever it is you're trying to do. Speed, I really believe, is one of the things that are extremely, extremely important because time is something you never get back. Option, shift, if you wanna add a modifier. Cool, sounds good. Let's move on to the next one. Shortcut number six, file switcher. This is honestly actually one of the best ones. There are some ones that you'll like use, you won't use. This one is one of those that if you're using Visual Studio Code, you kind of must use. This one is being able to switch between all files. Command P, use Command P or on Windows, it'll be Control P and it lets you be able to switch between files. You never want to go and actually select different files. This is the fastest way to move between them. So I'll just hit Command P and boom, I'll type in Firebase.js, Command P, home screen.js. You don't have to type in the JS part. You can literally type in F eventually and just hit enter or H or login page like L hit enter and just take you to them right away. This is really useful, especially when you're switching in between two different um, pieces of code or two different files. Another bonus one I'll give you here is do command, hold command, and then do P, P one more time and then let go. That will help you switch between the two most recent files. This is one of the reasons I actually didn't want to leave PyCharm because they had such an easy way to switch between two files that I couldn't find anywhere else. And I finally found it. And Sunny actually shared this with me on Visual Studio Code. So command P, P and let go instantly. So command P, P, let go instantly and it'll allow you to switch between two files right away. Shortcut number seven, the transporter. Now this one is very exciting because this is another one that I personally use all the freaking time and it helps me move really fast. And this will help you move from the start of a line to an end of a line or from an end of a line to the start of the line or from the top of the page to the bottom of the page. What is this? All you have to do if you're on Mac is hold command and right. That alone will help you move all the way to the right. Command left will help you move all the way to the left. Command up or down will help you move all the way to the top of the page or all the way to the bottom of the page. Oftentimes if I'm coding and I'm jumping straight into a file that I was coding on, let's say yesterday, when I jump into it, usually if I'm trying to write new code, by default, I'm just trying to get all the way to the 
bottom right away. So without even thinking, as soon as I open a file, I just do command down. It takes me all the way to the bottom. If I need to then change something or delete something, I do command and do right. And it takes me all the way to the end of the line. Now you can also use modifiers with this. So this is a cool part. You can actually hold command shift and do right. Now, not only will you move, but you will select everything in your movement. You'll select everything in that line. If you do command shift and do right, you do command shift and do down from the top of the page. Not only will you move down, but you will select everything on the page. Learn these. These are going to uh, anything that has to do with movement and being able to move faster will add up and save you tons and tons of time over a period of one month, two months, six months to 12 months. It will literally add up to hours and hours of free time for you. Shortcut number eight, auto complete. Now this is the one that I really hope most of you are already using. If you're not, you're spending a lot of time doing something that could be very, very easily done already. And it's tab. If you hit tab, whether you're on Windows or a Mac, it will auto complete the thing that you're trying to write. So if you're trying to write function and you write F U N and you hit tab, it will probably auto complete it to function for you. If you already have a variable like counter and you do count and you hit tab, it will auto complete it to counter. This is also very, very useful in the command line. A lot of people I see them miss out on it in the command line and they will like write out the entire word for where they're trying to go. When instead they could have just wrote, they could have just hit tab and it will auto complete it for you. And in command line, it's cool. Even if, if you have something with like ZSH, if you keep hitting tab, it will start actually selecting and scrolling through the choices as well. So like you really don't have to write. You can just keep hitting tap, 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 hit enter and like going to those folders. So there you have it, folks. The best eight shortcuts for Visual Studio Code. If you enjoyed this so far, smash the like button. If you want to see more shortcuts or you want to see part two, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to become a highly paid developer, then make sure you subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be bringing you tons of more videos like this. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I love your beautiful face. This is Kazi and I'll see you in the next video.